Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, to Chairman Meeks. Uh, appreciate you uh, allowing me to attend this important hearing. Uh, it's an honor to join you today. The district I represent, Illinois Fort, has a high number of foreign-born constituents, over 30 percent, most from Latin America. They immigrated to the U.S., often pushed by factors resulting from in from or related to U.S. policy toward the region. I'm one of those uh, immigrants, too. So my constituents and I and many Latino immigrants from across the U.S. are living testaments to the real human consequences of the policies we are discussing today. I'd like to begin with Assistant Secretary Nichols with respect to Venezuela. Uh, studies by respected Venezuelan and U.S. economists have found that U.S. unilateral broad-based sanctions have had significant negative impacts on the Venezuelan economy and humanitarian situation. How does our government reconcile its pledge to work to improve Venezuela's humanitarian situation with the evidence that our sanctions are having the opposite effect? And please be brief as I have several questions. Thank you. Uh, the responsibility for the humanitarian situation in Venezuela falls squarely on the shoulders of the late Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro for the mismanagement of the economy, the kleptocracy that they've presided over, uh, and the uh, collapse of the private sector uh, in that country. The United States focuses on uh, supporting humanitarian assistance to the Venezuelan people to help mitigate those challenges, both within the borders of Venezuela and uh, its neighboring countries. And on the sanctions? So uh, our sanctions are targeted against the Maduro regime, and uh, I don't accept the premise that our sanctions are responsible uh, for the suffering of average Venezuelans, as I said. So you take exception to those findings of uh, those economists. Um, it's on record. Uh, thank you. Uh, Assistant Secretary uh, Robinson, on the subject of uh, Colombia, um, as you know, uh, Colombian mercenaries have been increasingly implicated in international conflicts and assassination attempts. Many of these mercenaries are veterans of the Colombian military, which is heavily funded and sometimes trained by the U.S. The mercenaries who participated in the assassination of former Haitian President Jovenel Moise included men trained by the U.S. military. What steps is the State Department taking to ensure that soldiers it helps fund and train do not go and join Colombia's growing mercenary industry? Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman. I would just note that we have uh, an excellent relationship with our partners in Colombia. We continue to uh, uh, discuss with them the issues of human rights. Uh, and I, I would note that uh, by law for years now, uh, all of the uh, Colombians that uh, are trained by the United States must pass uh, vetting, a, a pretty stringent vetting process. Uh, we, we are constrained, of course, uh, by what they do after they leave uh, the, the service of the Colombian military. But while they are in the Colombian military and while they are uh, uh, receiving training from the United States, uh, we, we are assured that um, that uh, that they won't take part in those types those types of uh, activities. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, back to uh, Mr. Nichols. Before I run out of time, and as you know, eight human rights defenders in in Honduras have been unjustly detained for their peaceful protest for illegally mining around the Guapinol River. Uh, Mr. Nichols, uh, is the embassy in Honduras sending a representative to observe and ensure U.S. presence and the closing days, uh, dates of the trial uh, against the Guapino water defenders? Uh, the U.S. embassy follows closely uh, both human rights and environmental issues in Honduras, uh, and we continue to observe and, and offer our thoughts uh, within that context. You're not sending uh, any observers to the trial? Uh, 
I can't speak to that specific trial. I have to get back to you on the specific trial. Thank you, sir. I yield back. Thank you.